the episode I've been waiting for. We learn who the hell is Bigfoot. This episode of Drunk Mormon Podcast. Oh, this is the podcast where we drink with the Mormon strange and peculiar people they may be. Come hear the stories we were taught in our childhood. Come drink and join our eternal family. Come drink and join our eternal family. Welcome, Welcome to the Drunk Mormon Podcast. This is a podcast where we get drunk and we talk about people who never get drunk. Which are Mormons. <laughs> That's the first time we did it the, the other, other way, way. around. <laughs> um, I just wanted to see how it felt. It felt fun. You hate it. I didn't let's hate do it. Let's do it the other way. No, no, no. It's no, fine. I'm, I'm David Joan Banks. I was raised Mormon. <laughs> I'm Lauren Sackwich. I am slowly learning about Mormonism. But you've never been Mormon. But I have never been Mormon. And we're your hosts. <laughs> Hi. Each week on the podcast, we teach Lauren a little bit more about Mormonism, whether that's stories from the actual Book of Mormon, mm -hmm. stories from Mormon church history, or interesting things that Mormons believe. And this week, we're learning about Bigfoot. Yes! Oh my god, yes! We took that quiz. I am so excited. We took that quiz, episode one. And you told me that Mormons know who Bigfoot is, and I, every episode, have asked to learn about Bigfoot, and we are finally doing it, and I'm so excited. Here we are. I can't wait. Yeah, we're learning about Bigfoot. But first, but first, but first. Uh-huh. We have some business. Okay. As always. Fine. So last week, we read two of our reviews for the podcast. Oh, yeah. Which was fun. And We should do we, that again. We said we'd do a couple more this time. Um... And uh, one of our reviews, the subject of the review says, you said you'd read this in my accent. Uh, yes. <laughs> and looking at the username, I think I know who this is, so then I know what the accent is. Okay. And they're They Brit didn't say? They didn't say, but if it's who I think it is, then it's British. Okay. But like, there's one, there's like lots of different British accents. I don't know if I can do this person's version of British, but I will give it a try because you said I would. Oh, yeah, I, I did say that. Liar. Thank you. Thank you for not making me a liar. Um, so we'll do that one second. Okay. <clears throat> so the title of this five-star review is Moroni is a Time Capsule. Super fun and I learn stuff. These guys have an awesome report. Definitely worth a listen. It's from D&D Boy. Oh. That's super nice. D boy. So now I have to do it in the accent. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is the worst. Oh yeah. So I'm we were drunk and doing accents, and then I promised that you would read <laughs> read other people's comments in that okay, accent. Okay. So I'm so sorry to the entire United Kingdom. Um, man, I'm so nervous. Do it. I don't know why I'm so embarrassed. Oh, the hilarity. DJB explains the complexity and eccentricity within Mormonism with great eloquence and a healthy dose of sarcasm. More of him, please. Oh, that's so nice. Also, that was a great accent. Thanks. So if you want your review read in an accent, then write in to iTunes reviews or Google Play, but mm -hmm. you might need to help us know that it's on Google Play because I still haven't checked. Thanks. Bye. <laughs> Just kidding, there's more podcasts to come. So, uh, Okay, so we're back. We're gonna learn about Bigfoot. Okay. Was that our business? Was that the end of our business? The only other thing that we need to mention is after we finished recording our episode last week, producer Ashley pointed out that we used an uh, incorrect term. An incorrect term. And I like genuinely believe in language affecting how people see the world and see other people. Mm -hmm. And so I don't remember what we were talking about, but we made some comment, or I made some comment about homeless people. It's a lot more appropriate to say a person who suffers from homelessness versus a homeless person. person. Yeah. So yeah, that's us trying to be better and learn and grow and be a little more charitable. But other than that, the only thing left I have business-wise is drinking. The, yeah, <laughs> okay. I decided for drinks today, anybody who knows me, knows that I went to Japan one time and I will not stop talking about it. <laughs> so I you're, brought- You're basically a Mormon missionary. I'm a Mormon missionary, but only for myself and my travels. Okay. Um, I brought sake. Oh, I've never had sake. 
Um, that's funny because also your nickname is Saki. Yeah. So it's Saki for Saki. <laughs> All right. So me and Saki going to drink some Saki and then we're going to do some Taki Taki. So different people drink Saki different ways. Um, you can have it hot. You can have it cold. I like it cold. And then I also like to add kind of a little bit of flavor to it. So what I do is I take frozen berries. I'm going to muddle them down, oh. which we enjoyed doing so much last time. And then you don't need ice because it's going to keep the drink cold because the berries are frozen. Sake um, is a rice wine. It's got a distinct flavor, but I'm hoping with the berries you'll like it. And then you just pour it and let it like soak up the berries for a hot sack. I'm excited. All right. Cheers. Cheers. Huh. What do you think? It's funny because of the berries, as I brought it up to my mouth, it suddenly smelled like Twizzlers for some reason. Oh, interesting. <laughs> That's not what it tastes like. Uh -uh. Um, and then you can make it like you can flavor it if you leave the berries in it like overnight. Like it obviously does something to the flavor. Like the more berries you it's put in there. It's a lot sweeter than I thought it would be though. Okay, so I may be totally mispronouncing this, but when we were in Japan, they would always say kanpai for cheers. So, okay. Kanpai. Kanpai. <laughs> I'm sorry, entire nation sorry. of Japan. <laughs> Let's get drunk! I'm always on the toilet. <laughs> That's when I have all my ideas. My best ideas are on the toilet. Mm -hmm. Or in the shower, or walking the dog. I have no drunk stories because so all my many. drunk stories are me being responsible. I have so or me many. being like, even though I've rebelled against Mormonism and I drink in my rebellion, I'm still this well behaved child. So I go to Long Beach to meet up with some friends at a bar because they have friends playing a show and they have not only their alcohol that they brought from home in a flask, but they also have like a fishbowl full of alcohol and they're just like, hey, drink this, drink this. And I'm like, if I don't have to spend my money, I'm going to say yes to a drink. And then my friends, they know that like I've never gone, this is, okay, this is true and sad. I've never gone dancing. Like, I've just never gone dancing. I've never been able to do that. Like, uh -huh. I went to Brigham Young University. I learned how to waltz and foxtrot and Hungarian folk dance. Like, what? every other Mormon. Wait. But I've never gone dancing at, like, a club. Stop. <laughs> Wait, what? They teach you that? You can take classes. So my friends from Long Beach wanted to, like, help me do this because they knew that I wanted to challenge my comfort zone. So we're, we're at this bar in Long Beach. I'm just drinking whatever they hand me and then like they're trying to make me dance and I just like will s I'm just like refusing to stand up. I'm just sitting in my chair and they like take my arm and like pull me and my legs reflexively lock around the table or <gasps> lock around the leg uh -huh. legs of the chair and they pull me and it drags me in the chair <laughs> and like catches the table and almost knocks the table over oh my because God. I'm like too nervous to get up and dance to uptown funk. <laughs> <laughs> And those are my drunk stories. Those are That's all of the them. the cutest drunk story. <laughs> That's so nice. That's a much better drunk story than mine. Okay, well, I still haven't danced. So, so we're real Mormony. We're ready for, oh my God. We're ready <laughs> for our lesson. Yeah. I'm gonna turn over the, to myself to I'm teach no, it to you. I'm gonna turn over the time to you. Okay. To teach it to me. Because this is the episode I've been waiting for so and, bigfoot. so this is a bigfoot episode okay <laughs> in order to understand who bigfoot is we need to go all the way back to the beginning <sighs> to the garden of eden whoa okay to the garden of eden mm -hmm. god created the world and then he created the garden of eden and mm -hmm. it was this perfect paradise mm -hmm. and then he created a man named adam, adam. And from Adam, he took a rib and created a woman named Eve. Mm -hmm. And they were friends, and then they... Well, they were lovers. No, not in the Garden of Eden. Oh. They didn't even They didn't even have a sex drive. So Adam and Eve lived in the Garden of Eden. Yeah. And then, you know, everything was great, and then Eve ate the apple. Uh-huh. So that's all the same. And then... Was there a snake? And there was a snake... Got it. ...named Satan. The snake was named Satan? Well, it was Satan as a snake. 
Oh, really? Yeah. Yo, I'm confusing the Jungle Book and... (laughs) 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 Oh, Sorry, I'm confusing the two. No, no, no. So there's there's a snake and tells Eve, eat the apple, eat the apple. And she's like, I can't, I can't. And then she does. And then she gets Adam to eat the apple. Uh Uh-huh. And now they have knowledge. And now they have knowledge. Apple is not the fruit that Mormons believe she ate. It's not? We'll get to that at the temple. But just for clarification, there's never... Mormons don't believe it's an apple. I read this book that people think it's a tomato. That's not Mormons? Not Mormons. Okay. What is okay. it? Well, I don't even fucking know what Are we going to put this in the podcast? I guess so. Okay, so Ashley, our producer, just told us that... It's not a fucking apple. Yeah, Mormons don't believe Eve ate an apple. <laughs> anyway, either way... They eat fucking something. I don't care if it's a Totino's <laughs> pizza. And then they gotta go. Got it. And they also have realized that they were naked the whole time. And you know what happens when you realize you're naked? They fuck. They fuck. So they have some babies. Yeah. They're Cain and Abel. Cain and Abel. So yes. Cain is born first. Uh-huh. And then Abel is born. Yeah. So Cain and Abel are there. And God's like, hey, you don't live in the Garden of Eden anymore. But I'll still talk to you, even though you can't see me. So he talks to them and they hear his voice and he's like, guess what? You gotta make some sacrifices. Oh, per usual. Yeah, per usual. So Abel, his job is like, I'm in charge of the sheep and I'm gonna sacrifice sheep. So he's like, let's go get the sheep and pick a good one and sacrifice it to God. And God's like, I approve this message. I like this. This is a good sacrifice. Good job, Abel. Okay. And Abel's like, yay, and leaves. I did good, yeah. And Cain's like, I want, I want that. And Cain has, like, fucking fruit or something, so he goes and sacrifices his fruit, and God's like, eh. I don't know, no, sorry, not a good sacrifice. Try again another time. And Cain's like, what the fuck? Why did you like Abel's sacrifice and not my fucking right. sacrifice? This is what I'm in charge of. Why is everybody playing favorites with the little brother again? Mm-hmm. Except this is the first time, because Nephi was born later. Okay. So, Cain sacrifices his fucking fruit, and God's not into it, and Cain gets really pissy about it. And Satan mm-hmm. is still, like, walking around, talking to people, being like, hey, you should be evil. Ooh. And it says that Cain loves Satan more than God. Uh-oh. And Well, Satan seems to be nicer. Well, Satan's being a lot nicer to Satan's him. Satan's like, hey, I like this fruit. Yeah, Satan's one telling them to make I, the sacrifice. Satan's I like, like this fruit. This is good fruit. You should go sacrifice it. Yeah. And he's like, yeah, I should. And he's like, yeah, you're going to do great. And he sacrifices it, and God's like, Pfft. no. And then Cain's like, what the fuck? And Satan's like, I can't believe this guy. This is our best what fruit. What the hell is with, like, some god, am I right? And yeah. Satan's like, fuck Ugh. yeah. So then Satan's like, promise me that you'll obey me. Ooh. And Cain, who's pissy. And also a child. And also a child ready to throw a match, too, and burn the whole thing down, all of Missouri. So he says, I have a quote. He says, Truly I am Mahon, the master of this great secret that I may murder and get gain. What? And Cain goes, and he's like, Hey, Abel, what's up? And Abel's like, Hey, big brother. And Cain's like, You know what you can do? You can shut the fuck up. And he kills him. Cain kills Abel, his brother. Right. And then God shows up and God's like, yo, Cain, where's Abel? And Cain's like, this this isn't my fucking problem, man. Am I my brother's keeper? And God's like, your brother's blood is crying up from the ground. Whoa. Because you murdered him. And that's how Cain became the first murderer in the whole history of the world. Whoa. Yeah. So God cursed Cain for this. Uh-huh. And, he, and so he got banished, right? He's like a fugitive. From where? From the people. So it's like, okay, you can't so they're sit already with us. Like, yeah. You got to go. Uh-huh. So he goes and his like family and shit, they all have to go with him. So that's one thing. He's a fugitive and a vagabond. Also, he cursed him so like if he tills the ground, like no Nothing crops are going to grow. And then the other thing he curses him is he, it says that he like put a mark on him. Mm-hmm. It doesn't specify what this means. Okay. A lot of Mormons historically believed that this is where black people came from. I thought that to people a bunch of, of African Af- descent were Aren't descendants Cain. of Cain, but it is part of the reason that Brigham Young <laughs> forbade 
people of color from having the priesthood? <laughs> I didn't, so I'm laughing because I'm drunk and also not comfortable. It's so hard. It's wild. So that wasn't changed in Mormonism <gasps> until 1978. Oh my God. It's its own episode. God. But we have to kind of acknowledge that there's a lot of like racial prejudice and racial bias in some of these folk stories uh-huh. before we continue. So I'm really sorry. Trigger warning. That's a downer. So, and that's the last we hear from Cain according to the Bible. Oh, but like what he, what does he do? Like he just like settles down and makes a family or? Well, he has a wife. I think he took one of Abel's wives as his wife after he killed him. <laughs> and it's, she loves Satan, it's too. It's so brutal. She also loves Satan. Everybody loves fucking Satan. Satan, Satan officiated the wedding. He probably did. Um, it was either him or Scarlett Johansson. So. So, boom. Cain's done. He's cursed. And all of his people are cursed. Fast forward. Boop. To 1835. Great year. There's a man named David W. Patton, who's a member of the original Quorum of Twelve Apostles that Joseph Smith made. Oh, okay. And he goes on a mission to Tennessee. And he tell this thing happens to him. Uh-huh. And he tells his friend. Okay. And his friend wrote it down, the story. Yeah. And this is the story from David Patton in Tennessee in 1835. Okay. I met with a very remarkable personage who had represented himself as being Cain, who had murdered his brother Abel. As I was riding along the road on my mule, I suddenly noticed a very strange personage walking beside me for about two miles. His head was about even with my shoulders as I sat in my saddle. He wore no clothing but was covered with hair. His skin was very dark. I asked him where he dwelt and he replied that he had no home that he was a wanderer in the earth and traveled to and fro. He said he was a very miserable creature that had earnestly sought death during his sojourn upon the earth, but that he could not die, and his mission was to destroy the souls of men. About the time he expressed himself thus, I rebuked him in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by virtue of the holy priesthood and commanded him to go hence, and he immediately departed out of my sight. things happen in mormonism and all religions but like why was bigfoot i th- okay i watch a lot of weird documentaries and i've seen how many people have donated so much time and energy into documenting bigfoot and no one's been able to do it for years but you're telling me bigfoot was just walking alongside this dude i mean talking about the legitimacy of this story technically so this story was first published in a biography of David W. Patton uh-huh. based on a letter that the biography's author received from Patton's friend who he told this to. Okay. So there's like a game of telephone going on. Got it. The story is recollected in a very famous book in Mormonism written by Spencer W. Kimball, who was one of the prophets of the church. And the book's called The Miracle of Forgiveness. Mm-hmm. This is this book is in like every Mormon's home. Okay. And he cites this story when he's talking about like unforgivable sins such as murder. You know how in Harry Potter there's unforgivable curses? <laughs> yes. Well, in Mormonism there's like unforgivable sins. sins. One of them is murder, one of them is homosexuality. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so I'm basically a murderer, so I was like, okay, well might as well do both. Um so it, yeah, it was a warning. It was a warning for those who might commit an unforgivable sin, like murder, homosexuality, premarital sex. Right. And then in 1884. Is that where the you know there's this old wives tale of like if you masturbate, you'll your hands will get hairy. 
<laughs> no. Yeah, I've heard that yeah it was. I mean, for men mostly, but it was like in I'm the nineteen fifties. Is that where this is from? Are my hands more hairy than other people? No, I find them less hairy. They have hair than right there. Other men. You have normal hairy hands. Yeah. Also, does it depend on which hand you use? How hairy you don't they grow are? hair by masturbating. That doesn't make sense. <laughs> I don't know. I wasn't never taught those things. I was just told never to touch it. Um. So that's so then so the miracle of forgiveness was like widely published and distributed. Yeah. So suddenly yeah. everybody could read this story. There are some interesting things that happen in South Weber, Utah, only a few years later, that help connect it to Bigfoot. But let's go back and read more things about Cain. Okay. Appearing to modern people. Great. Well, we learned about David W. Patton's story. Eliza R. Snow who was brother of one of the prophets of the church, Lorenzo Snow. Sister to one of the... What did I say? You said brothers, too. Oh. Her brother was one of the prophets of the church, Lorenzo Snow, and he had a birthday party, and a bunch of church leaders were there, and she had written a poem that said... This is the poem. 1884. Eliza R. Snow. As seen by David Patton, he was dark. When pointing at his face of glossy jet, Cain said, You see, the curse is on me yet. The first of murderers, now he fills his post and reigns as king or all the murderous host. What? Mostly it's like Cain was black and was a murderer. Oh, got it. Anyway, but David Patton wasn't the only person to see the Bigfoot. Oh, thank God. Named Cain. There's a man named E. Wesley Smith, who is the son of Joseph F. Smith, a descendant of Joseph Smith, who was a later prophet. One of the Smiths. One of the Smiths. Here they go again, showing up in our stories. Wesley was a president of the Hawaii Mission, and they were opening up a temple there. Okay. And so the night before the temple is supposed to be dedicated, I have another quote. A man came through the door. He was tall enough to have to stoop to enter. His eyes were very protruding and rather wild looking. His fingernails were thick and long. He presented a rather unkempt appearance and wore no clothing at all. There suddenly appeared in Smith's right hand a light which had the size and appearance of a dagger. A voice said, this is your priesthood. He commanded the person in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to depart. Immediately when the light appeared, the person stopped and on being commanded to leave, he backed out of the door. And he called, his, and he called his brother. His brother's name was Joseph Fielding Smith. So you have Joseph F. Smith and Joseph Fielding Smith. Both of them were prophets. Okay. At different times. So he calls his brother, Joseph Fielding Smith, who told him it was Cain. Quote, whose curse was to roam the earth seeking whom he may destroy. 1970, we're moving forward and forward in time. Two boys from the Bear River Valley who had just received their mission calls while they were riding, they saw a big hairy creature. It spooked their horses. They went to their stake president. He told them it was Cain. But this is, you're just quoting things where people see big hairy things and then other people who weren't there tell them it's Cain. Yeah. That's not, that's not like... There's more. Okay, keep going. In the 19... One of the apostles of the Mormon church in the 1920s was visiting the mission in Mexico and his car broke down. Uh -huh. And while walking through the desert to find help, the apostle encountered a very large man. This is a quote. Uh -huh. About seven feet tall and very dark and hairy coming towards him. The apostle asked him who he was. The man said he was Cain. Okay. And tried to overpower the apostle, but the apostle cast him out with the authority of the priesthood. 1997, <laughs> within our lifetime, quote, a group of Boy Scouts was on a camping trip when they heard strange noises. It was Cain who chased them through the woods and into a cabin. They locked the door, but Cain tried to climb through the chimney. The boys prayed, then got the idea to light a fire in the fireplace. <laughs> the boy who lit the fire saw a big hairy man's face in the fireplace right before it went up in flames. Later, they saw Cain running across the field, yelping in pain. That's a smart kid. Yeah. People still <laughs> see Cain. Well, let, let's parse this out. A lot of people see just big, hairy figures. Only two people saw characters that were like, yo, I'm Cain. 
Well, maybe he's, they just didn't give him the opportunity to introduce himself. <laughs> well, no, one of, the, one of them was setting him on fire. Also, why, I'm sorry. Why a Bigfoot is showing up to all these people? We'll get to is that. Is no one recording it? Uh, Do you know how well, much money you could make? I know. Do you know how many shows are trying to show that Bigfoot lives? It's hard to get a good photo that's not blurry. Those boys that had time to light a fire. Also, Patton's just chugging along next to him. Yeah, but that's in 1835. That's true. Okay. You're right. So, Bigfoot. Let's yeah. just talk about Bigfoot. Let's chat. October 1967. Great year. Roger Patterson filmed 30 seconds of 8 millimeter footage in Northern California of a large, hairy creature walking away from camera <laughs> and at one point... I've seen it. To I've look seen this. At the camera. I have seen this footage. I just reenacted it. Is Patterson Mormon? No. Okay. But that's that was the that was the big thing. So this is in 1967. Uh huh. Remember that Spencer W. Kimball's book came out in 1969. Okay. So after. So right after. Uh huh. So when this footage came out, it was like a big thing. It was right? all the rage. 1977. Less than 10 years after Spencer W. Kimball republished David W. Patton's story about seeing Kane, mm -hmm. there's a man named Jay Barker with his two sons who's hiking in the Utah mountains with Larry Beeson and his sons. Mm -hmm. And they're just hiking around and they spotted a creature a half mile below them by lake. Okay. And they thought it was an elk, but then one of the kids kicked some rocks like a dumbass. Uh -huh. And the creature turned and looked at them. <gasps> it was not an elk. It was Bigfoot. It was fucking Bigfoot. It ended up walking away on its hind legs. And they said it was definitely not a bear. They're so afraid that they camp there. They're afraid to hike back out. <laughs> what? I know. It makes no sense. They're so afraid. They're like, let's stay exactly where Bigfoot just saw us. Yeah. Okay. So, Are they Mormon? Yes. Okay. I Just getting so. a feel. They're in Utah, so. But they get, finally, the next day they go home and they tell everybody about it. A local shepherd is like, oh, that's weird, because my sheep have been afraid of that area for some strange reason lately. Definitely. And they're good. also like, oh, that's weird, because this is the first year that we haven't seen any coyotes. <gasps> Bigfoot's eating them. Or scaring them away. What does he eat? I don't know. We don't know. Okay. Sorry, so, back to the story. a few years later, it's 1980. Mm -hmm. Pauline Markham was looking out of her kitchen window while she was getting ready for church and saw a big black creature on the mountain a few miles away. Okay. Coming down the mountainside. Okay. Her cousin, Ronald Smith. There's that. Another there's Smith. There's that name again. Saw a similar creature in his pasture early the next morning and it scared his horse. Uh-huh. And then this guy named Walter G. Ray, because everybody has a fucking initial in their name, he set a pan of burnt stew on his windowsill to cool off. Uh-huh. Because he ruined the stew. Right. And then he came back and found that it was licked clean. Okay. I just think like, it's a huge leap to be like, oh, Bigfoot ate my shitty but stew. Here in Kane probably doesn't even want his crap stew. In South Weber, Utah, God. these stories... Cause this, so they talk about this, and then Jay Barker, the guy who was out with, in the the mountains, yeah. he's like, oh, this just happened to me a few years ago, and this is where people started to go, oh, I've been reading this book, The Miracle of Forgiveness, Bigfoot is Cain. This is where it all, that's where it all finally connected. <laughs> okay, so you're saying people are seeing Bigfoot, mm -hmm. and he's eating their. So before crap this, food. nobody was saying Cain was Bigfoot. They were just saying, oh, I've seen Cain. Right. Kane was this boogeyman. <laughs> right. And then when the, when the Bigfoot sightings happened in South Weber, Utah, people were like, oh my God, it's the same person. Oh. <laughs> oh. Okay, wait. So you're telling me that you have all of these Mormon stories of a big, like, hairy looking personage. Yeah. Who's like, I'm Kane and I'm cursed. And rah, rah, rah. Yeah. And then unrelated to that, some non-Mormon takes a photo of Bigfoot. And there's a Bigfoot frenzy. And then people are like, 
oh, <laughs> these two things are similar enough. They must be the same thing. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. How does that not make sense? How many big, There's tall, just, hairy men? to connect them to. Like, Andre the Giant was a big, tall, hairy dude. Like, P some people are just... He, but the he guy who plays Khal Drago is a big, tall, hairy dude. Well, like, they're not wandering the earth by themselves. Know, but, like, maybe neither is that guy. Like, this just the one time that people ran into him. Like, if, if people, like, ran into me while I was drinking, they'd be like... Oh, that girl is running around like a wild person. That person's a wildling. But I have a home. Like, that's not, <laughs> it's not the same thing. So here's something that might help you understand <laughs> okay. why people connected these dots. Got it. Mormons culturally, and yeah. I don't think this is exclusive to them, but this was definitely my experience, even in like modern times. Mormons are always looking for evidence as to a that their church is the true church so things like oh well joseph smith predicted the word of wisdom before science knew which wasn't right. actually true right or b oh man life is so hard for us and but it's because satan is against us because we're mormon in all of these stories bigfoot shows up to people who are being righteous and there's a lot of mormon folklore stories of bad things starting to happen to people right before important righteous things happen. If you remember when Joseph Smith goes to pray. And abradeth not. Oh yeah, Satan comes in. Satan comes and in is, and tries and to stop him. him. And, and when Wesley was the night before he was going to dedicate the new temple in Hawaii to help all of those Polynesian people become Christian. Bigfoot comes in. Bigfoot Cain comes, comes in. in. However the fuck he got to Hawaii, I do not know. Yeah. Mormons see this also as evidence that they're doing the right thing because Satan is sending his worst bad guy. He's sending Cain. Cain was the first murderer. Cain invented murder. Okay, I guess, yeah. Um, and I should also say not all Mormons believe this. Okay. And not all Mormons even know this. Story. Got it. <laughs> this is more folklore. But some of them do believe it or they are open to it being true, which is Got its it. own thing. Okay, um, so not all Mormons know this story. Not all Mormons know this story. This isn't like taught in church. This is more something that like people talk about in the hallway. You know what I mean? Okay. So this is like conspiracy theory Mormonism. Right. Except for the fact that it was published in The Miracle of Forgiveness by a man who a few years later was Is an apostle. a prophet of the church. Oh, and then a prophet. Holy crap. Yeah. So a prophet of the church. But I'm, I'm sorry. I don't mean to laugh. Because I like really don't mean to like discredit anything. Like everything I've learned so far has been very fun and very like interesting. But like I am really enjoying this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm having a really good time. I went to California Survival School recently. <gasps> And in it, um, the guy, the leader, was like, this is what you do in a bear attack. Oh if it's a black bear, you drop to the ground, you hold your head, and you, you're you non-confrontational. If it's a grizzly bear, you run. So that's what you do if it's a bear. If it's Cain, you say... "The By the power of the priesthood in Jesus Christ, I, I command you to leave. By the power of the priesthood in Jesus Christ, I command you to leave. Yeah. So, just in case we're ever stuck out in the woods. It's good to know. It's good to know. The more you know. The more you know. So, the Bigfoot as Cain story is also sort of a tool, especially in that era of Americana, where post-civil rights movement, people of color are starting uh, to get more rights, and the white privileged population is still kind of resistant to this, because uh -huh. they were enjoying so much real estate before, and now they're having to share, share. literally and figuratively. And so you have this character that's like the father of all african people who is also who's also the first murderer and cursed Oof. like there's one story where this is this is a quote missionaries tracting a white section of a town in georgia were surprised when a huge black negro came to the door and hurled obscenities at them his mane was hideous and the missionaries left much frightened their mission president later told them that the man had been cain 
that the town was very wicked and that they should no longer labor there. Whoa. It's like this, we're going to do, like, it's going to be a huge fucking bummer of an episode, but we're going to have to do an episode about, or multiple episodes, honestly, about, like, the racist Racist. history of Mormonism. Hmm. Anyway, now it's time for the best part of any Mormon lesson. (laughs) The activity! The activity. We try to have an activity every episode. So far, so good. And this week, our game is called... Bigfoot, Big Mouth. You know what they say about big feet? Powerful diaphragms. (laughs) Lots of people have claimed to see Bigfoot over the last several hundred years. Uh And some people even claim to have photo and video evidence. But did you know, Lauren? Yeah. What Bigfoot sounds like? (laughs) No. So here's the game. I'm going to play you different sounds. Some are actual claimed recordings of Bigfoot. And some are not. Your job <laughs> is to correctly identify yes. Bigfoot. Got it. Or Kane. Got it. This okay. is my favorite activity so far. <laughs> Play him. Play, <laughs> Play these clips. Roll the clip. Roll the clip. <laughs> okay, so. <laughs> and if you want to, I can play them the like, second time. Yeah. I'm going to say not Kane. I'm going to say that's from King Kong. It's not Kane. Not, yeah. Or Bigfoot. Right. It is a grizzly bear. Oh, okay. But close. That was a good guess. All right. Number two. Number two. No way. That's a cartoon. Oh my god. (laughs) (laughs) So that is... Somebody submitted that as evidence of Bigfoot? This is one of the most famous recordings of Bigfoot. It's part of a a sound recording called the Sierra Sounds. That, yes, that's supposed to be Bigfoot. Play it? What part? The... (laughs) That's Bigfoot. That's Bigfoot. (laughs) Just play it again. Let's go to the next one. Brother! That's a short one, so we'll play it again. Brother! That's Bigfoot. That's Kane. Somebody said that was Kane. That's Bigfoot. Boom! That is from Sasquatch, Ontario. They recorded that. I don't know if it was a study. That one makes more sense. I think it's saying Robert. Brother! Okay, it does sound like that. (laughs) Yeah, so that must be, he must know someone named Robert. Okay, here we go. Number four. Um, I'm gonna say not Bigfoot. Do you have a guess what you think it is? I feel, honestly, when I first, this is so stupid. I thought it was a slow-mo clip of Ace Ventura, Pen Detective. <laughs> When he's like making the rhino yeah. like sounds, you the, know, what I'm ta- when he like comes up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what was it? It's a humpback whale. Oh, that's, that's nice. Cool. Yeah, the humpback whale. So just like, so I don't sound like an idiot for the rest of these. The ones that aren't Bigfoot are animals. Yes. They're so not weird recordings of TV movies. Yeah. I actually thought that sounded like Chewbacca. <laughs> Oh, yeah. It made me almost put a sound of Chewbacca, but I thought it was likely that Lauren would guess it was Chewbacca. Okay. Number five. Again. Well, that doesn't sound like the first... Bigfoot clip, but that seems valid to me. That that I feel like that's Bigfooty. I'm gonna say that's Bigfoot. That's a Velociraptor. 
from Jurassic Park. <laughs> so they are from movies. <laughs> well, it's not like a person. <laughs> okay. I know, I know. I threw you off by answering your previous question. And here's our last one. Okay. I mean, that sounds like just a man yelling off a mountain. So I'm going to say, yeah, somebody said that was Bigfoot. It's Bigfoot. It's Bigfoot. <laughs> that was, was that from? That was recorded by three people, um, last names Grover, Smith. Smith, yeah. And Andrews. Ah, Smithy, Smithy, Smithy. And this one was sent for verification by someone who worked at, I think, UNLV, like with a PhD. Okay, I have a conspiracy theory. Is there a Smith in every recording of Bigfoot? Um, no, but also not all Smiths are related. Um, I mean, I guess that makes sense. It's a very common last name. Like John Smith and Pocahontas. Like Not related not to Joseph related. Smith. Oh, well, I don't Same know. Same initials. I guess I never looked it up. I'm assuming. That was a great game. That's our game. <laughs> that was game. I don't even know. I, we didn't need to keep score because I feel like I won. <laughs> I think about half and half, but I didn't keep score. But that's our game, and that's our lesson this week. Yay! <laughs> so thank you, Lauren, for joining me on today's journey. Thank you so much for including me on this Bigfoot adventure. <laughs> <laughs> now we'll go watch Harry and the Hendersons together okay. on a camp out. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, well, and thank you, everyone, who's listening to our podcast today. We really appreciate it. You can find us on Instagram and Twitter at Drunk Mormon Pod. We're on Facebook.com slash Drunk Mormon Podcast. Slide into our DMs. Slide into those DMs. Send us your audio recordings of Bigfoot. Yeah, you can send those to <laughs> Drunk Mormon Podcast at gmail.com. That's also where you can send questions or corrections if we, you think we got something wrong. Um, and uh, we're still in our infancy. So please rate our podcast on iTunes. Leave us a comment. We will continue reading them. And be a great member missionary and share this podcast with a friend. I know that they'll like it. Anyway, that's it for now. I'm David John Banks. And I'm Lauren Sackwich. And now we bid unto all farewell. farewell.